hi everyone hope you're all doing well welcome back to our channel and in this video I'm going to talk about Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and I'm going to talk about threat and vulnerability management dashboard insights the first console that will help you to assess your enterprise security posture now when I say your enterprise security posture I mean what is the current state of devices how many vulnerabilities exist how many security remediations are in place a sort of overview in terms of what exactly going on from an endpoint security perspective now if you're watching the series from the beginning in the last video we have discussed about some of the very basic and fundamental prerequisites that you need to know to get started with DVM. But the core agenda of this video will be knowing details about each and every section that exists in dashboards. What factors affect the values or the recommendations that you see on the dashboard section? Then I'm going to talk about why you should use M365 Defender Portal instead of Security Center because all the new investments and all the new features availability will be embedded to this new portal which is typically termed as Unified Defender Portal from Microsoft. Now if you guys remember this is the deck that I have used in our threat and vulnerability management video wherein I was briefing about all the different set of options that are available on the console. And in this video, I'm going to discuss about dashboard. Now, when it comes to accessing dashboard, it's again available on both the portal, which is securitycenter.windows.com, typically termed as MDATP portal or M365 Defender Portal, which is security.microsoft.com. But my recommendation is that you should use the new portal, which is security.microsoft.com. Let me show you this on the console and then things will make a lot more sense. So what you see now is one of my browser where I have signed into security.microsoft.com, which is the Unified Defender Portal, as well as Security Center. Now, when it comes to the list of different sections which are available in Dashboard, likewise, Organizational Exposure Score or Microsoft Secure Score for Devices or Device Exposure Distribution, this list is actually same on both the console. Okay, but what you will see now, I'm talking about the difference to be very precise, is for organizational exposure score and Microsoft secure score for devices, you're getting this button of improve score, which is not there. Now, this is just an example to make you guys understand that when it comes to new capabilities, it will be always now introduced to security.microsoft.com because this is where Microsoft is actually heading this portal will be deprecated very soon and uh, the process of migration has already been started so if you will just refresh this page or this kind of message is something that you guys might have already seen multiple times that beginning 6th july we will gradually start routing tenants to microsoft defender for endpoints new home in the recently unified m365 defender portal Okay, so it's my suggestion that you should use security.microsoft.com because again, this is where Microsoft is heading. And if you'll make yourself comfortable with this particular portal, it'll be easier for you. So now let's begin by understanding each and every detail related to dashboard. The first thing that I would like to talk about is views. Now, depending upon the account that you are using or depending upon the privileges that you have, you will be able to view some set of information. The first category is global or org wide view. Now, what do I mean by this? That on my browser currently I'm signed in with my global admin account which typically means that any data which Microsoft Defender for Endpoint has to generate this user will have access and that's the reason the default view itself has all the device group selected that means for any device that exists in my enterprise I will be able to view the information whether it is security recommendation or let's say top vulnerable software or let's say top vulnerable device okay so any device that exists in any of these three groups 
which exists in my enterprise, I will be able to view all the information. As well as the most important part is, depending upon the groups that you have selected over here, all this information which is getting reflected on the dashboard will get customized. Now, what do I mean by this? That let's say right now I go and I select a specific group, which is Asia region endpoint, for example, and I'll click on apply. What you will see exposure score is customized and the same process is been there for all the other sections of dashboard. So to make it exceptionally clear, anything that is available on the dashboard section is basically dependent upon the groups that you have selected. If you are a global admin, you can view a global insight which is getting generated by TVM console itself. Okay. The next part is group specific or department specific. Now this is very easy and let me explain this with an example. Okay. Think about the scenario which I have just shown wherein I signed in with my global admin account and what happened that this particular user was able to view all the information. But when we talk about Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, we know that there is something called custom RBAC. Right. I've specifically shown that in our SOC tiering video, right? I can have custom roles defined. So in that case, let's say if your account has a custom privilege to only view endpoints or devices of a specific group, then the default view that you will get will be very much specific to the devices for which you have access to or the groups for which you have access to. So this is one of my other user where I have defined a custom RBAC role for this particular user. And once this user signs into security.microsoft.com, he only gets the access to the group which has been assigned to him, which is NA region endpoint. Now this unassigned group is something which is available to all the roles. So even if you have created custom RBAC role, if there is any device that does not exist specifically in a particular group, then it will be a part of unassigned group and this will be accessible to all the roles. Okay, so to summarize, depending upon the accounts that you have used or depending upon your access to TVM console, all the information which is there on the dashboard section will get customized. Now there is one more thing which is very important which is typically related to dashboard view and this has been documented in Microsoft article. I will be sharing that in the description and it has been mentioned as an important note and that is devices that are not active for last 30 days, let's say about four and a half weeks are not factored in the data that reflects in your organization TVM exposure score and Microsoft Secure Score for Devices. Now, what does this typically mean? That let's say if I go to device inventory, right now I'm getting four devices listed over here because these four devices contacted Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Service in last 30 days, as well as the exposure level for these devices are also defined. I mean, it has some value. But then I can apply a filter and I can see all the devices that have been onboarded in the last six months. But then there are certain devices which have not contacted Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Service. And for them, the exposure level is being shown as not available. So to summarize, the exposure score section as well as Microsoft secure score for devices is basically the outcome of the telemetry which has been captured or which has been reported by the devices in last 30 days. Now let's go ahead and talk about each and every section of the dashboard. Now the first one is exposure score. Now this exposure score is directly dependent upon the weaknesses that have been discovered on the devices. Now for those of you who have already seen our CVE video will be able to relate this that the more vulnerabilities exist in your enterprise, the less secure your enterprise will be. 
The second one is likelihood of your device to be breached. That means based on the certain anomalies which have been observed on the device, based on the certain vulnerabilities that exist on the device and a combination of both correlated in sight, what is the probability that a specific device will get breached? Okay. The next one is value of the device in your organization. If you guys remember, there were three different values, low, normal, and high. Okay, so let's say there is a vulnerability that exists in 10 devices which have low importance for your organization. Then the exposure score will not be that great or the value will not be higher. But let's say all the high value assets that you have for your enterprise, if there are a lot more vulnerabilities getting detected in those particular devices, then your exposure score will be higher. Okay, and the higher the exposure score is, the less resilient your organization is. The last one is basically related to alerts which are getting discovered based on the activities which is happening on the device itself. So these are the four different parameters on which exposure score is dependent. Okay, now let's talk about the second console or the second section of the dashboard and that is top security recommendation. Now this is basically very simple. Think about this as a process of risk assessment wherein vulnerabilities are getting detected and depending upon the vulnerability impact, security recommendations are getting generated for you for which you can go ahead and create a remediation action. I will be talking about this in a lot more detail when we will actually discuss about remediation. That means how you can transform basically a re recommendation into a remediation action altogether. Okay, the next section is moreover related to your device score. Again, this is something wherein you will get segregation of different digital states, likewise applications, operating systems, network accounts, security controls. And then based on each category, there will be security recommendation that you can go ahead and implement in your organization. Just to show you this, that let's say if I go here and click on improve score, what you will see is the category on behalf of which a certain recommendation is shown, okay? So let's say if I talk about related components, you can see there are certain security controls, which is basically ASR rules. And if I'll scroll down, then this particular section is more over related to the changes that you should do at the OS layer itself. For every recommendation, there will be ample amount of information in terms of letting you know what exactly the change that you have to make in terms of implementing a specific feature. I will be talking about all these in a lot more detail in our recommendation video itself, but I thought of just showing you that when we talk about Microsoft Secure Score for Devices, this is basically dependent upon these five categories and what are the recommendations that the portal is highlighting for you. The next section is majorly focused towards devices and applications. That means how many softwares are top vulnerable or what are the top exposed device. Let's start off with the first category itself, which is device exposure distribution. This is basically a graphical view of how many devices have what kind of exposure level. So it's basically low, medium and high. And depending upon the category that you select on the portal, you will be redirected to a console wherein you can get the list of all the devices which have that particular exposure level. So let's say in my tenant right now, all the devices, currently active devices, have medium exposure distribution. That's why I'm getting this one single color. And the moment I'll click on this, there will be a redirected device inventory wherein I can get the list of all the devices which have medium exposure level. Okay. The next one is remediation activities. Now, depending upon the group that you have selected on the console, this list is going to show you the summary of all the remediation actions that have been initiated from the portal and what is their current state. That means how many of them are active, how many of them have been closed. Now, this list is basically the activity that you have initiated from the recommendation section and then you have routed a task to Microsoft Intune console or Endpoint Manager console. 
The next section is top vulnerable software. That means depending upon the weaknesses that have been discovered for a specific software, how vulnerable that software is for your organization. Please go ahead and watch the software inventory video as well. That will give you a lot more insight in terms of knowing what are supported softwares and what are unsupported softwares. Now, the last one is basically the list of top exposed devices, which has actually been decided based on the combination of how many security recommendations are getting generated for that particular device, how many vulnerabilities are there, and what is the current exposure level. Okay, now there is one more section which is there on the portal and that is top events, which is this particular section. Okay, now this is basically a summary of when exactly an event has happened in your enterprise. What is the current state? What all impact it can make? a sort of event timeline view and we have a specific video for event timeline itself. If you have not seen that, please go ahead and watch that video as well to get more insights in terms of what exactly event is all about. Okay, so just to summarize, we have discussed about each and every section that you see over here. If you have any question, please feel free to ask them in the comment section. Let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed. We have discussed about each and every section of the dashboard as well as why you should use M365 Defender Portal instead of Security Center. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the weakness section, which is this one. Okay. If you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.